this one will go over here. careful when you're drilling, you can punch right through the other side and push too hard. Walk down here. This is quarter inch and this is quarter inch. Try to make it a tight fit. That should be a fairly tight fit. Clean it. Okay, now all I have to do is the hot gas discharge line here. Okay, flux on it. And over another 11 inches and then down so we got 33 so let's okay pipe cutter where are you hiding here? It's all kind of crooked. I gotta straighten it out. Okay, that's fear. So we want to go up over the top. Someplace I don't know if it's a sample,
this high. So I want to mark this with my marker pen. Bender. Now, as I marked it, that black mark, that's got to be on the top of the bend here. So you line up just a little bit over the edge here. That should end. That black mark should end up at the top of where the pipe uh, is going to be. And this is a nice toy. I've had this one a very long time. Got a 5 8 I've used them for almost ever. And I want to measure this now, so. Okay, here's the unit. It's all finished, it's all piped in. I've got the new suction line installed, a Schrader fitting here, and a Schrader fitting here for the high side. It makes it easy. Getting a little bit of bubbles in the sight glass. It just is so cold. Uh, put a new dryer filter on it. It's an EK dryer filter. Uh, acid and uh, waxes. Clear the uh, brass fitting here. I hooked up the pressure control to the compressor to put up the fitting. Tonight. What we're going to do next week is change that to it's a single, it's a low pressure control. I'm going to put a dual pressure control on one for the low side and the high side. And the high side. If the fan stops working or it gets plugged, the condenser gets plugged up, the high side function will sense the high pressure. The head pressure will get way too high and it'll sense that and it'll shut the compressor off, whatever you have it set to. It's a good idea to have that on there just to help protect the compressor. When the, when the head pressure gets way too high, the compression ratio gets way too high and the pistons get very hot, the piston sleeves and the valve plates. And that's where you start breaking down your oil into waxes and uh, derivatives uh, and acids start happening. The, uh, the oil starts out as a base and in time from very, a lot of hot summers and uh, dirty condensers, the oil turns to uh, an acid. And that acid slowly eats away at the varnish on the motor windings. And the varnish starts out nice and thick. Uh, it's insulation and it gets very smaller and smaller over time and then in a couple years it just shorts out. But our suction pressure is pretty low, the head pressure is, is, is low too. But that's just because it's uh, we're running, it's so cold inside. See our sight glass cleared up. What the bubbles was, was the expansion valve was uh, opening up and letting a lot of refrigerant flow through it and then it closed down. It's hunting that valve. It, the valve's a little bit worn. Not much you can do about it. Now, let's see if we can see this here. Um, if the evaporator temperature is supposed to be 45. Return gas temperature is supposed to be 65. And my return gas is 35, so we're considerably lower on it. Now that we're not, it's running cold is what it is. It should be a little bit warmer, but it's not really gonna hurt the compressor. Now here's our amperage on the compressor. It's a three-phase system, and the three-phase you have 
three li three lines, L1, L2, and L3, and they go to the compressor. Now, this is something that uh, bothered me a bit when I saw it. And I didn't wasn't too happy about. But see the way see the way the guy installed this. He came out here and he put a 45 on it and then a 90 and went in. And this this copper, it's a good ground. And if you're working in there and you uh, you're touching this, you're gonna you're gonna become the ground. The electricity wants to get from here to there. And if it it can you can do it any way it can. If um, uh, it'll go from here to you, here, and then to there. But this, it's a shame that this is. Can only figure out that the fellow that installed it, he wanted to save three dollars on a 90 degree elbow instead of running it down and over and in. But that's just dangerous. Don't do things like that. Spend the three dollars on the elbow. The customer will pay three more dollars. You know. But that's that's just I don't. It's unfortunate that it was done that way. Now here's something else that I don't particularly like. Fuse boxes, especially this one. I have to. I'm literally kneeling down on the ground right now. And if I'm testing it. I'm, the, I'm going to be the best way for it to get to the ground. And you have to look underneath this lid here to get at it. And you can take these screws out and pull the lid out. But it's just difficult. Now, what I don't like about this, what I would do differently is, instead of fuses, I would just put a disconnect. You have a circuit breaker in an electrical panel, that's a fuse. And the wires go from that circuit breaker to here, to these fuses, so it's, got, it's a second fuse. Now there was a time that they, the um, building departments felt that the, this fuse would blow first before that circuit breaker, but that's just not the case. The circuit breaker is what always trips. And, and of course, this will trip on Saturday night and you won't have this exact fuse. So it, then, now you, then you have to move wires and thimble them together. It's just a real pain in the, the butt, you know. Goes to, you got a bunch of fuses in the truck with you know, all those different shapes and sizes, and you still won't have the right one. But sight glass is full. You don't have frost coming back. The pressures are good, and I just have to put the cover on it, and we should be good to go. Okay, guys, here in Ohio.